Well, how is everybody doing today? Usually we don't start off the video with my ugly mug in front of the camera like we're doing right here right now. But I see all of the professional YouTubers start off the video kind of being in camera. So we'll do this for a little bit of a moment here and then we will get my ugly mug off of here. And we'll get on to what we're actually doing here uh, for today. Today is July 1st, and we're starting second cutting hay for 2024. We started hay on the 28th of May, and usually you want to do these cuttings about every four weeks. We're a little later than four weeks, but it took us a little longer to do uh, first cutting and what we would like to see it take for a time frame and we started a little bit later on here and we would like to have started even a little later but we've got wheat that's pressing and we need to get this hay done so that we could slide right into uh, cotton wheat my brother and nephew they are cutting here now and I get questions from time to time on what we actually use for mowers and how do we go about cutting our hay. I usually video it every year however I don't have that great of an opportunity to put the mowers on video because if I don't do it on a day like today I don't get a chance to do it because the mowers are usually far enough ahead of me and into a different area that I don't have time to do it. So today we're going to show you what we mow hay with. We use a 7930 and a 7290. They are both hooked to Pottinger triple mowers. Uh, they call them a butterfly mower, um, whatever. There's a mower that's mounted to the front of the tractor and two on the back. It has a 30 foot cutting width, a 34 foot uh, cutting width. There's a 10 foot mower in the front and two 12 footers on the back. So we'll be to the field here in a second and we'll kind of give you an idea of what this process looks like and then I need to get back to the shop and get this chopper ready to go so that we can get to chopping here tomorrow afternoon sometime. So we'll be in the field in a second we'll kind of show you what this process looks like. Again we show this process every year but we do have some new viewers and maybe some of you have missed it because I don't usually video this that often. So we'll be to the field in a minute here. So this particular farm, this is where we started our cutting route. And uh, they're gonna cut this field to our left here in a little while. This is going on its second year, I believe. And we primarily grow herbicide resistant alfalfa. So that is uh, a stand of just alfalfa. We don't have anything mixed into our seedings. You can see we've got some blue flowers. It is at, it's fully matured. Uh, it needs to be cut right now. Uh, we cut this on the 29th of May. And today is the 1st of July, so we're a little more than, now yeah, we're like, what is that, 32 days or something like that. Now this is a Harv Extra alfalfa, and it does hold the protein a little more than your regular uh, alfalfa. This field here is obviously corn now, but that was alfalfa, and we... Um, no-tilled corn into this on the 6th of June. Um, things are looking pretty good. We had a pretty good kill with the uh, herbicide that they used to uh, go in and kill the old alfalfa crop off. This field to our left was seeded down 
and 19. So we had 20, 21, 22, and 23. Four years of harvest plus the first cutting that we took off of it uh, this year. This is an older stand here to our right. Uh, last year there was they were working on these power lines and there was a wooden road that went clear across this hay field and into uh, that cornfield that's been picked up and it's gone out of there uh, this here is uh, wheat and it's probably a week to ten days out and we need to get our hay done so that we can get into uh, cotton wheat we'll harvest this wheat off and then we will um, seed it down to alfalfa so I'm gonna pop the drone up here in a minute my brother's in this field here cotton my nephew's mower is parked I don't know why I probably should have checked on him but we'll throw the drone up and uh, I'm actually going to go back to that other mower up there and make sure he's not uh, broke down. My brother's down in that far corner. We'll check on my nephew's mower. And then we'll throw the drone up and we'll give you guys a visual of what this process uh, looks like. All right, so we will get you guys some footage of mowing hay. This is my brother running this machine here. He just opened this field up and he's on his second pass down through the field and he's on his way back through now. He's running uh, 7930 with the Pottinger triple mower. My nephew had a doctor's appointment that he has gone to now that's why the other mower is uh setting so we've got a wet spot in the field right there the alfalfa didn't grow all that well and he's making his way up across the field here he's probably clipping along at i don't know 10 12 miles an hour anyways and just clipping right along these mowers are just cutting and laying the hay. They do not, we do not run conditioners on them. There's not a roller on it that uh, the hay passes through, nor is there flails. It's just cutting and laying. And the idea of that is to just kind of let Mother Nature uh, let the hay dry out on its own. Uh, it takes a considerable amount of horsepower to uh, run the flails or crushers. And most guys that have uh, these type of mowers do not uh, have any kind of conditioner rolls or flails on the unit itself. Uh, being that uh, you're not running the hay through a flail or a conditioner uh, they say that you can kind of preserve some of the leaves on the actual plant itself there's all kinds of theories and different thinking uh, around that so this is uh, the second year that um, this has been alfalfa We've got just this one uh, wet spot here where the alfalfa didn't grow all that well. And um, we have gone to uh, a herbicide resistant alfalfa, whereas we don't have Timothy or fescue or anything like that growing with the alfalfa. We've found that alfalfa does the best growing all by itself if you mix timothy or fescue with it the alfalfa says well we're not going to compete with that other species we're just going to uh exit the program and it doesn't do all that well but what alfalfa does really well in is the uh drier climates um 
well drier does well in drier conditions in other words we've noticed that if we don't receive an adequate amount of rainfall the timothy and the, your grasses they just don't grow the alfalfa is rooted a little heavier rooted in the ground a little further and it will uh, do better in a drier year and in the past bunch of years here we've had some dry summers and this hay is done the alfalfa has done uh, really well so that'll give you an idea of what this uh, process looks like here I would have to say he's doing uh, the drones doing 15 miles an hour right there we could kind of get an idea how fast he's going if I just fly it right along uh, we're doing now he's coming into the headland here we can we can see how fast he's going yeah, that's 10 miles an hour right there so we'll get uh, flying alongside him here and we'll see how fast he's going he usually clips right along he knows what the field conditions are as far as washout spots and what have you there is a spot up ahead of him here that he'll have to watch out for probably by the time he gets to his next pass so we'll get it right in frame oh i gotta get a little farther ahead yeah 10 miles an hour he can cut a lot of hay in a hurry with something that's 34 foot wide at uh 10 miles an hour so we're going to get back to the shop get the chopper ready to roll here and uh we'll join up with you well it'll be tomorrow with a segment on uh chopping here so we'll see you guys uh next step of this here all right